Hello, today in this video I will be doing a quick overview of my OSCP exam experience and just talking through my studying methodology and some things I wish I knew before the exam or before I started studying. So this is just my certification. I took it on November 4th, so I've taken the newest uh, iteration from OFSEC of their OSCP exam. And getting into the exam, I started at 5.30. Uh, this is kind of personal preference. I'm just a morning person, so I wanted to start earlier and I didn't want it to interrupt my normal sleep schedule by starting the exam closer to the afternoon. I wasn't sure how long it was gonna take. Um, but I do highly, highly recommend when you first buy the PWK lab access, uh, book the exam right away because you can't really get towards the end of the labs and then be like, okay, I want to do it next week or I want to take my exam, you know, tomorrow. I guarantee the times will already be booked by then. So you want to book it way ahead of time uh, and give yourself some breathing room too. So again, I started at 530 and I immediately went to the active directory. Now I did come into this with the bonus points but I just wanted to get Active Directory out of the way because I actually felt uh, pretty well prepared from the exam uh, modules that they gave us or the modules from the training as well as the practice exams, which I'll talk about later. So I went through all of AD in roughly 90 minutes to two hours, I believe. Um, I got pretty lucky with the initial foothold and from there, it was very, very similar to the methodologies that were taught in the uh, course content and the practice, practice exams. Uh, I do recommend taking 15 minute breaks each interval. I took a 15 minute break each time I got a foothold or if I just felt stuck and I didn't really think uh, I should go on this path, I'd just step back, go grab a snack or something. And then I finished my exam at around 12.40, so that's about, let's see, seven hours, I'd say. Um, I got my last administrator shell around then. And then from there, uh, I didn't have that much to do because my methodology for the reporting was I took a screenshot each way and then I just wrote like one sentence of what I was doing. So in terms of screenshotting, I didn't have to go back and do a lot but I did have to go back and put in a lot of the, the fluff that they expect in the report. So I have, that's, I recommend doing that way because you won't waste your you know brain power, so to speak, on explaining each exploit step. Like you'll just take a screenshot and be like, ran nmap scan, uh, put it in your nmap scan and then move on. So then you can come back later and actually fully explain it like they are expecting you to in the report. So. Also, you should develop a methodology when you're taking the exam and stick to it because it's very, very important that you don't try to get sidetracked or start panicking early because then your whole exam experience will not be well. So going into the methodology and studying, um, <clears throat> I got lucky and I had a mentor that taught me a lot about cyber and introduced me to the OSCP exam. So if you are in that environment, I'd highly recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to find someone who can give that mentorship to you. But if not, that's fine. There's plenty of free courses online that you could always start with. Uh, try hack me, things like that. And then uh, if you can't afford the exam right now, it is pretty expensive. I think it's 1600, I wanna say. Uh, highly recommend starting with the Providing Grounds Play, which I will pull up right here. Let's just see. So this is the OFSEC's main site, but if you go to course and content, uh, let's see, should be in here somewhere, providing grounds labs. So these are essentially just a bunch of machines that OFSEC has available um, for you to try to hack. And the practice is the paid version and then the play is the free version. You get three hours each day and they're only Linux machines, but I highly recommend uh, starting out with this and getting some belts or some machines under your belt before you move on to the actual uh, 
you know, labs where you have to pay for the practice. It is nineteen dollars a month, I believe, or one ninety nine for the whole year. So it's not a horrible idea or a horrible price, in my opinion. Um, anyway, back to the course. So if you do take the course, you want to list out the syllabus, which you can find online. I'll bring that over right now. So this is the syllabus for the PWK course. I'll put the link in the description. But basically, it just tells you each uh, module that you're going to have to go through if you want to complete the entire course, which obviously is not mandatory, but I recommend it highly, and so does OPSEC. Um, so essentially what I did was I just took a note, a notepad, and I just copied each of these courses, and then I wrote a date and an estimation. So for instance, you know, these, these early ones, like uh, summary of the modules, it's only one bullet point. So it probably only take you, you know, maybe 20 minutes to read through the whole thing, if you even do. Uh, so these first ones I kind of got through in maybe a day or two, but then closer towards the end, it takes a lot longer. So I'd give yourself a couple of days. I probably did maybe three to four hours a day after school, um, but you know, it's up to your scheduling. So yeah, like I said, like these take a lot longer than um, the ones that in the very beginning, just because of the technicality and the setup and everything that's required. So once you do that, then I would recommend actually doing that, um, scheduling your exam time so you know how long you are going to take because you have 90 days of lab access, but maybe you can only do it in, you can do it in 80 and then you want to give yourself five day break and then take the exam, uh, something like that, which I believe I took three days off before I, I finished all my modules, took three days off and then started the exam. So if you want to give yourself a break in between the two, I recommend that too. Um, and then TJ knows, TJ Knowles OSCP prep goes along with that, uh, providing grounds practice and providing grounds play. So again, if, you, if money is uh, tight or if you don't want, if you don't think you're ready for the OSCP exam, I highly recommend getting these. So this is the free version. And this TJ Knoll, um, I believe he used to work for OPSEC. So he essentially just took all the machines from providing grounds play and practice that were similar to OSCP ex exam machines and just put them all right here. So uh, I believe I ran through most of these before I actually got the exam itself, just because I wanted to make sure I was ready. And I do highly recommend you could start there and then work your way up to actually buying the exam. Uh, let's see. And then for the bonus points, so you need 80% in each of those modules that I mentioned earlier. So you need 80% here and 80% is just reading 80% of all the content and completing 80% of all the uh, challenges that come with the content. So if you get 80% on each one of these, you will achieve 10 bonus points on the exam, which is relatively easy to do. And it also gives you a little bit of a, a buffer in case you need it. So if you have the 10 points, you can actually just do the three standalone machines and not go for the AD at all. But I don't recommend, um, trying to depend on those points and your ability to get the three machines. Personally, I felt like AD was one of the easier uh, sets just because it was very, very well covered in the offset material. Uh, and finally, note taking. Um, so I used the Obsidian app right here, and this will help you, has helped me at least with my entire methodology because all I needed to do was maybe I start my Nmap scan and then I find port uh, whatever, 3306, and I'll have all this stuff right here that gives me uh, plenty of information that I can use to enumerate SQL or, you know, whatever service is on here. And then you can put everything in here, uh, back it up to GitHub, which I highly recommend. I don't I have a video on that, but it's pretty readily available online. I think it's just a plugin you can download and then you set up a key. It's very easy to do. Uh, just in case you don't want to lose it or if your machine gets, you know, blue screen, whatever. Um, it's it's very helpful for a, a methodology perspective. Like, for instance, if you get a foothold, you can just go to Privesk. And then if you're on a Windows machine, then you do all these things. 
or you can run through this task uh, list. So again, highly recommend that. There we go. Um, I think that's everything I want to show. Okay, and then reading the five grants. So this one is very, very important to read through this entire FAQ section. Uh, I did just because it's like, you know, people miss this a lot. You'll see this a lot if you're in the Discord channel. Um, people think that you need 80% total, but it's for every, you need 80% every single module and 30 proof.txt hashes from the challenge lab machines. I forgot about that part. Um, so, you know, just read through this entire thing. You don't have to memorize it or whatever, but just understand each of it because it's very helpful to um, your exam knowledge. And I also recommend this blog post too, just so you know what's happening in the exam and you don't, you don't think you passed, and then you submit your write up and then you missed a, a screenshot or something, or you didn't get a correct shell, things like that. Uh, Cause you don't want to do that and make a little mistake after all that work. And then finally, my last thoughts. So take a lot of notes, even if, once you're working through the modules, you're working through the practice exams, everything you need to take notes. If it's new to you, you should write it down because you're not going to remember it, uh, you know, in like a week. If you're, especially if you're like doing this stuff every single day and you're just getting a flood of information. Um, I highly recommend doing all three OSCP prep exams. So when you download or when you buy the course content, you'll get three retired exam environments. So that's, you get three standalones and then the AD and highly recommend running through all of them. Don't be afraid to use the discord when you get stuck, but don't rely on it. Just do everything you know how to do, do a little bit of research. And if that still doesn't work, look for a hint. Don't just look up the way to uh, complete the whole machine and then make a mock write up. You can't obviously get this graded or anything, but it does highly, I highly recommend it because it'll improve your um, experience with making actual pen testing reports. So you'll get a lot better at screenshotting, posting, and like what I talked about earlier, when you're just doing, going through the exam screenshot, post it in your report, uh, do a quick little one sentence of like what you're doing, and then um, you can come back to it later. So then, once you finished all three of those write-ups, you should have pretty good experience with, uh, you know, making a pen test report. And then my finally, my final tip would be all the pivoting stuff that they teach you in the exam or in the uh, course content is, is useful. But personally, and one thing they didn't go over was the ling Lingolo, I believe is how you say it. I'll pull up the GitHub right now. Lingolo NG. Very, very useful. Um, it's just a basic tunneling um, language or, you know, code is in Go. And it's it can run on Linux and Windows. Obviously, you're going to need it for uh, the exam, but essentially just makes pivoting very, very easy. And while all the other pivoting um, techniques they teach you are very helpful, Lingolo just makes everything very, very easy. So like I said, uh, it's useful. Well, it's Lingolo is useful for um, the OSCP, but the pivoting techniques they teach you are more designed towards real engagements because this is a little um, heavy on the system and you might not be able to get those tools on there all the time. So I wouldn't recommend relying on it, but for the exam, at least I'd become very familiar because, you know, I have my, you can set up your pivots on, in the exam very, very quickly, especially if you practice it in the three OSCP prep exams. So one final thing I wanted to mention was the who is Flynn exam report template. This is a template I used for the exam report. Uh, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory if you just read through the entire um, GitHub and the instructions for setting it up. Uh, highly, highly recommend doing this. It makes it look like a nice professional report. Like this is the one I used, uh, the blue one. And then you can just pack it up into a PDF and ship it off to the OPSEC portal where you um, 
submit your report. So that's all I had. Oh, and I did um, finish my exam. Actually, I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but I did finish the exam with 90 out of 100 points. <clears throat> I got the AD or the Active Directory environment completely knocked out and then two standalone machines. I couldn't get on the third one and then I had the 10 bonus points. That was 90 out of 100 points uh, in about seven hours. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. Any questions you have about the exam that I can't answer, obviously uh, OPSEC doesn't want you know, their exam holders to give away certain uh, tips or advice about the exam, so I can't answer everything, but general questions I'd be happy to answer. Thank you.